Hey guys, uh, recently we got a shipment that was really exciting here at Carolina Aquatics, um, something we've been waiting for a long time and our customers have been requesting for just as long. We got in a shipment from West Africa, which uh, once was kind of a common occurrence or something that happened every now and then for some cool oddballs, but with COVID and the flight restrictions and even years later coming back from that, uh, we have it's been really, really challenging to get anything from West Africa into the US. So we're excited that not only was it a successful shipment that made it here on time, but the fish were spectacular, healthy, and we have a huge variety of interesting African oddballs in stock. One fish that used to be pretty common in the trade and now is uh, you know, not rare, but certainly not something you see every day, the African butterfly fish. We've had tons of requests for these guys since we haven't been able to get Africa in. Uh, so we're happy to have a whole bunch in stock. It's such a cool, interesting predatory fish that stays small. Um, their surface dwellers are always up at the top of the tank. And uh, basically they look like a mini arowana with that upturned jaw and really kind of scary looking demeanor but generally speaking they're peaceful towards anything that won't be a meal and they do great in like uh, planted tanks with overhanging vegetation anything with cover over the surface of the water it's a really unique accent piece fish um hardy and generally does well with other tank mates that are too big to eat african butterfly fish have a really unique body shape with those um long flowing ventral fins They've evolved into sensory organs, basically, where they're really almost like whiskers, where they're really delicate and they can sense other fish. They can sense potential prey or threats coming from below or beside them. Another fish that we were super excited to see here in this shipment is something I've never seen personally in my life. Um, a lot of aquarists haven't. The Cross River Puffer, Tetradon pustulatus. These guys are freshwater puffer fish, true freshwater, not brackish. Uh, from the Cross River area in Nigeria. And for many years, this fish existed in a literal war zone. So it was impossible to collect and uh, kind of something that was only a myth for a very long time. Some old photos, that was about all you'd ever see about these guys. Constantly requested, never available. Uh, we were really excited to be able to get some of these for the first time in my life, first time for Carolina Aquatics. And uh, they're just an unbelievably colorful fish with bright red markings like targets and yellow backgrounds. Um, like most freshwater puffers, they're intelligent, engaging, constantly on the lookout and aware of their surroundings. These guys uh, are extremely hardy so far. They don't seem to be too particular about water quality. They love eating um, anything that they can get their hands on, basically crayfish, shrimp, snails, anything with a hard shell they'll go nuts for. They are a bit aggressive towards each other, so I'm not sure how keeping them, you know, cohabitating them will work out in an aquarium, but uh, they do seem to be okay with other fish that they don't see as a meal. Another West African staple that was our number one customer request from the region for a long time was the African rope fish or reed fish. These guys are a really, really unique fish, not an eel, but closer in um, family to like the polypterus, the vitures. They're essentially a very elongated viter with a heavily armored body, um, pure freshwater, found all over West Africa, but until flights were available to us, just impossible to source. So we we're really excited to see a bunch of these come in. We got a large, large quantity in because we knew our customers wanted a bunch. So we we're keeping them in our large holding vats. They are super cool, constantly on the move, it's very hardy. See those two little pectoral fins up front flopping around. That's their primary means of uh, motion can't really see in the vat, but the underside of the fish is like a reddish orange. So they're really pretty in the aquarium. Care of these guys is relatively straightforward in the aquarium. They like um, long, lower tanks, plenty of room for them to swim around and move. Uh, they are escape artists, so a, a close fitting lid is an absolute must. All right, another really exciting fish we got here with this uh, West African shipment. It's a fish that's actually used to be somewhat common in the trade, not so much anymore. Um, interestingly enough, you do see these a lot as tank raised babies from Indonesia, but wild adults are really rare. This is the Fahaka or Nile puffer. These guys are a big freshwater puffer found all over Central and Western Africa. Um, really impressive fish. We got some huge, huge show quality specimens. And um, one of the things that was really cool about these is that um, Certain geographic localities of the Haka puffers have a bright, bright red spotting on the sides, as opposed to just the normal yellow stripes that most of them come, uh, most of them show up with. So these guys have that really, really deep red spotting, almost similar to the Cross River. And I've seen some be mistaken for Cross Rivers before, but these are Fahaka puffers. They're big, beautiful. And uh, let me see if I can get one, a closer shot of the red spotting. So just the 
red spotting on the side is totally unique to certain geographic localities of Bahaka puffers. We're still trying to fatten this one up, so she's get, she's getting several crayfish a day. Um, has no problem taking down the shells of bigger crayfish. Another favorite from West Africa I haven't seen in quite a while is the elephant nose fish. Uh, these guys are super unique looking. Um, again, used to be something you'd see in fish stores somewhat regularly. Now, not nearly as much. Um, there are mormorid, which is a family of weakly electrical fishes all over Africa. Um, so elephant nose, what's known as the baby whale in the trade. Uh, several other fish that end up in the hobby sometimes are all, they're all similar to knife fish in South America in that they sense mild electrical fields and they sense most of their surroundings, including other fish by the electrical fields they give off. Um, so these guys are really odd. You can see the little elephant trunk small eyes they don't have a great um they don't have great vision because they rely more on that that special electrical organ to sense their surrounding um relatively peaceful cool little fish they don't always like to get along with each other but in big groups they do pretty well and um they're if you give them an aquarium with like fine sand on uh, lots of little crevices and hides they'll constantly spend their time going through with that little nose sensing out little food items and trying to eat um food. They'll eat frozen blood worms, black worms, anything tiny and um, protein rich. One of the more unique fish we've had in recently, um, a fish that caused a real stir at the open house event we had was the gold fire eel or xanthic fire eel. These guys come to us from Indonesia. Um, as their name implies, they're, they're solid gold or xanthic color morph, which means they lack black pigment entirely with really bright yellows. Although the trade name is Xanthic Fire Eel because at first they were considered fire eels, they're actually Mass Assemblis unicolor, the unicolor eel, a little bit different than what you uh, typically see in the trade. So we still call them fire eels, but the scientific name on the website is correct with Mass Assemblis unicolor. Uh, these are really showy fish, one in a 10,000 perhaps in the wild finding something like this. They're gorgeous, just like a fire eel, care is very uh, similar. They're inquisitive, they're interesting, they're very smart and um, escape artists as with most freshwater. In the aquarium, you can help influence that gold color coming out a lot brighter by keeping them on a dark substrate and feeding them foods that are rich in pigments like carapil or astaxanthin. So the diet impacts that coloration quite a bit. Another really beautiful West African fish that we got in with this shipment, uh, one of my favorites and Definitely an underrated fish in the hobby because it doesn't get a lot of love is the African red eye tetra. Uh, these guys are a big growing tetra, of beautiful coloration. They just look absolutely spectacular in a school under good lighting. Um, and as their name implies, they have red eyes, but not just like this South American red eye tetra. They have gold and iridescent highlights throughout the body. It's a really, really pretty fish that deserves more appreciation.